Ready to secure your Docker setup and prevent potential disasters? Today we're diving into how to set up a socket proxy for your Docker Compose stack. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tenevin Tech and our server security series. In the last video, we installed Docker, created an environment file, and locked down our firewall. If you missed that one, hit the card above or check the description to catch up. I've put together a GitHub repository with all the files you need for this tutorial, including the Docker Compose files we will be working with today. You can find the link in the description below. Feel free to use them as templates or copy them directly for your own setup. Today we're focusing on a critical security feature for Docker users, the socket proxy. We'll cover what a socket proxy is, creating the root Docker Compose file, creating the socket proxy Docker Compose file, and using the socket proxy with other applications. By the end, you'll have a more secure Docker setup and a better understanding of how to protect your host machine from potential vulnerabilities in your containers. What is a socket proxy? Well, we first need to understand the Docker socket. The Docker socket is a powerful interface that allows containers to communicate with the Docker daemon on your host machine. However, if a container is compromised, an attacker could use this socket to take control of your entire Docker setup and potentially even your server. The socket proxy is a security enhanced proxy, which allows you to apply access rules to the Docker socket, limiting the attack surface for containers such as watchtower or traffic that need to use it. In other words, it acts as an intermediary between your containers and the Docker socket that restricts access to the socket and ensures only authorized requests go through, thus adding an extra layer of security for your server. Now that we understand why we need a socket proxy, let's start setting it up. We'll begin by creating our root Docker Compose file. Go ahead and copy the contents from the Docker Compose file from GitHub. We'll eventually need all of these things, so you may as well copy it all over at once. As you can see, I decided to create folders for each application to keep their configuration and setup simple. You can choose to organize things differently if you want. In order to get the socket proxy added to our stack, we need to include its service definition, which I've separated out into its own file, and we need to define a network for it. You don't necessarily need to set a subnet, but I've decided to do so. Next, we need to create a separate Docker Compose file specifically for our socket proxy. Let's make a new directory called socket proxy and create the file. Paste in the content from the GitHub repo. This file defines the socket proxy service itself. We can define what Docker socket functions we want to allow with this proxy using the environment variables. Since we will be using portainer, traffic, watchtower, and others in our stack, we'll grant access to just the functions they need. We've put it into the socket proxy network with a static IP. You don't really need a static IP for this. I've just chosen to set one. You may have noticed that we also have it in the DN network, and there is a DN related label below. DN is the Docker image update notifier, which is part of the recommended update process. Generally, updating important security containers should be done manually to ensure your security doesn't go down in the middle of the night when you are sleeping. DN uses the socket proxy to look at containers on its network and notify us when an update is available. Since we put the socket proxy in the DN network and labeled it to enable DN, we will receive an email when it's time to update the image. We'll look at DN more in the next video. Notice how we are adding security options at the bottom. We'll be adding this to each of our services to prevent attackers from elevating their privileges if they manage to compromise the container. Now that we've set up the socket proxy, let's talk about how to use it with other Docker services. Instead of allowing containers direct access to the Docker socket, they'll communicate through the proxy over TCP instead. Every container will have its own way to specify the Docker host, if it needs it at all, so you'll need to look at the documentation for that application to see how they do it. The thing that should always be the same is the endpoint you'll set for the host. As long as the name of the service is the socket proxy and the port is set to 2375 in the Docker Compose file, then it should be correct. Even though setting up the socket proxy is a simple copy and paste, I've included it in my Citadel setup script. Check out the link below if you want to have the setup process done for you automatically. If you're working on a cool project with Docker, I'd love to hear about it. Drop a comment below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. In the next video, we'll be diving into DN so you can receive email notifications when it's time for you to update your critical security applications. And if you haven't seen our previous video on installing Docker and UFW, check it out here or in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.